Hi, Brian Stecker here again, certified personal trainer and owner of Boomer Fitness. Today I want to talk to you about how you can pass your United States Air Force physical fitness test. Now, I spent 20 years in the United States Air Force and I've not only passed my physical fitness tests, I've gotten excellent scores and I even got perfect scores on my physical fitness tests. And I've helped a number of my fellow troops when I was in the United States Air Force pass their tests after failing. Now, I never was a physical PT monitor, but I have my degree in exercise sports science and when somebody usually failed, they knew that I was a personal trainer and I would end up putting a plan together for them so that they can pass. So, uh, I want to give you the specific strategies that are going to allow you to pass your score, get an outstanding store, a score, or get a perfect score on this test. So let's look at the test and what we have to do to master this. So you need to get at least a 75% on this test to pass it. Now there's a couple uh, areas you have to master and the biggest one being the waist measurement. So we've got to get your waist measurement managed. We've got to be able to do your push-ups. We got to be able to do your sit-ups and we got to be able to do your mile run. So uh, like I tell all my, all my personal training clients, you can't measure, you can't manage what you don't measure. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to pull out the scoring chart and you want to see what your age is and see what you need to score in each one of those areas so that way you can start practicing those areas so way you can pass those areas. Now, a lot of the, so now that you've got that down, what you're going to want to do is then start putting together an action plan in each one of those areas so that way you can pass. So the first one being the waist measurement. Now, it's not the perfect measurement out there and it seems to be a big grumbling for a lot of people out there, but you know, there's results or there's, there's excuses. Now, there's a lot of people out there, you know, you can't make an excuse about a 45 inch waist. It's just something that you've got to go out there and, and, uh, and manage. And I know a lot of you guys have a lot of jobs out there. I've had a, a number of jobs out there um, and I worked on the flight line and I know the demanding schedule. And you can put together a good strategy, um, you know, usually that's what it comes down to is a lack of a strategy and putting in about three hours a week and you know if you put that together for your whole schedule for the week I mean I mean three hours in your week I think your total time that's less than three to five percent of your total time for the week so you've got to stop make the excuses that you don't have the time and you got to also stop making excuses the mindset that I hear from a lot of people is that it's not I'll never pass a waist measurement because um, for my height and my waist it's skewed so what you have to do about that is, is uh, manage it the best you can. And how do you bring down your waist measurement? You've got to manage your diet. So the first thing that I would do is pull up your uh, BMR calculator, your basal metabolic rate calculator. Uh, find out your basal, basal metabolic rate. Uh, just Google, Google that. And once you Google that, what that's going to do is give you your calorie burn per day. Now you can do that for a man and you can do that for a woman. Now, uh, what you want to do if you need to bring your waist measurement down is to lose some body fat. And what you can then begin to do is, um, is bring your calories down by 500 calories per day. So you find out what your BMR is, you find out what your activity level is, and then you subtract 500 calories off the top of that. What that's going to do through nutrition, it's going to give you a one pound of body fat loss per week. So every week you can check in and you can see how much body fat's coming down. You can do another waist measurement and to see how much that's coming down for yourself. Um, you look to lose about a half percent to a percent per week. So that's a realistic uh, time frame to do that for yourself, for your waist. So I'm not saying this to be hard on you. I'm saying this because I want you to pass your PT test. And so that way you can have an awesome career in the United States Air Force and you don't have to go on one of their special programs um, and, and put your career at jeopardy because uh, you're, you're worth more than that. So the next thing that you need to get down is you need to get down your push-ups and your sit-ups. Uh, easy way to do this is, uh, that I found when working with a number of uh, fellow troops in my shops or clients that come to the gym that need to pass their test is simple. What we end up doing is we do a three, uh, three body part split. Uh, one day we do a chest and back with some core in it. 
Next day we do a leg routine, or so Monday we do a chest and back routine with some core. Um, and then on Wednesday we do a leg routine with some core. And then on Friday we do a shoulder, bicep, tricep, core routine. That's just gonna start to build up the muscle, muscular strength and mus muscle endurance in those, in those areas. So I would pick, uh, you can look at any split that, uh, that's out there for chest and back and core. Uh, you can find any split out there for your lower body. And if you want those and you really need those, just uh, leave that in the comment section and I'll help you get those uh, videos created for you in the future. Um, and then one for your shoulders, your biceps, triceps, and core. Uh, then, so that's going to help you manage your uh, sit-ups and it's going to help you manage your push-ups. The next thing that we've got to get good at is the run. So a really great running uh, schedule that works for uh, fellow troops that I work with is this. Is one day, so say on Monday you did your chest and your back routine, on Tuesday you'll go out and just do a run uh, run walk for five miles. What that's going to do is build up your cardiovascular endurance. Uh, the second, uh, so say then Wednesday you do your, your leg routine with your core routine. On Thursday you would go out and run a mile and a half at a good mile and a half pace. Start your timer, stop your timer, and see what you can do that in. And then Friday you'd go you do your shoulders, bicep, tricep routine with your core. And then on Saturday, you would go out and do some interval training. So a really simple interval strategy is find out what, what time you want to get for the points that are associated with that. So uh, this is how you're going to employ that. So find out what your pace is for, uh, break that mile and a half down into quarters, into your, your quarter pace. So say, it, it, so say you're going to be running a eight minute mile, right? you would then break down um, your pace would be two minutes per quarter mile. And you run four of those, that's gonna be, that's gonna be a eight minute mile, and you gotta run a mile and a half. So you've got 10, 12, so that'll give you a 12 minute uh, mile and a half. So, uh, uh, so intervals are gonna challenge your anaerobic system and aerobic system anaerobic and aerobic system so it's going to give you uh, some more ump, some more power so on race day you can push yourself so a mile and a half is pretty much um, it's an endurance slash sprinting event so <clears throat> what you'll do is you'll go out to the track you're going to warm yourself up with your dynamic stretches that you have and then you're going to go into a warm-up and what that warm-up is going to consist of is a run walk of two laps 800 meters after you finish that 800 meters then you're going to go challenge yourself to this interval and it's going to be a 1200 meter interval. So example would be um, you want that eight minute mile pace so you know that each lap you need to do it in two minutes so that means after three laps you need to be able to run the three laps in six minutes. So you'll run that three laps, try to do that in six minutes or faster, then you'll walk a lap and then do it again do those three laps again in six minutes or faster. Walk again, walk a lap again, and then one last one, you're gonna run it as fast as you can to six minutes or faster, and then cool down with another lap walk. So uh, Pat, getting a great run time is just as simple as that. Let's talk about the time frame that it's gonna take for you to be able to get those results. Um, I've, had, I've seen people get really great uh, improvement in their PT scores um, that have failed in as little as eight weeks to 12 weeks. So uh, that's going to be the that's going to be probably the time frame that you're going to want to start preparing for that. So give yourself about three months uh, if you're if you're struggling the past eight weeks. If you're say if you're like right on the borderline, and then if you're good, in good shape and you really want to maximize it and you want to you know dominate this test, which I think everybody should set that goal but everyone has different schedules and different plans and different work hours, so um, I'd give yourself about six weeks for that. Uh, so those are the main strategies that I would employ uh, and that I've employed with my fellow troops and myself to get the perfect score. Uh, if you'd like some help getting the perfect score or passing your uh, PT test, it's my way of giving back. Uh, I'm retired after 20 years in the Air Force now, and uh, I've got the, 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 the cool little plaque on the wall. Um, just leave your comments down below. Send me a private message. Send me an email. 
Uh, it's my way of giving back. It allows me to connect back into it. I, I miss the guys sometimes. I miss doing the work out there. I miss the friendships, the camaraderie by, by it. And there's not a better team out there. And I know I gave you guys some hard times in this video, but it's my personal challenge to you because I know it's a great career and I want you guys to do uh, extremely well in your PT test and have a great career. So um, there you have it. So you guys go out there, dominate your PT test. If this has helped you, give it, give it a like uh, and give it a share and I'll be more than happy to help you guys out. So you guys make it a great day. I would love to hear what you liked best about this video. So down below, you'll see a comment section. Just leave your comments, and I wanna thank you so much for the comments you've been leaving me over the months, and I've been getting back to filling those out. Also down below in the description box, you'll see a link, and in that description box with that link, you wanna click it, and it's gonna take you to another page where you're gonna get four free workouts. To get those four, four free workouts, you just have to enter your email address. So go down below, click the link, and we're gonna get you those, those workouts right away by entering your email address. Also, down below, make sure you click the subscribe button so you get updated when we release all this great content. So thank you again for tuning in. Thank you so much for your comments. Go get your free workouts, and you guys make it a great day.